Welcome to the Lioness at the Door podcast. I'm Jackie Sorensen. I'm a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a holistic health coach for women of faith and their families. The image of Lioness at the Door is meant to inspire us to see ourselves as converted, wise, strong, and able women at the door of our homes, but also at the door of our choices. The door represents the opportunity to choose our path, even our thoughts, moment by moment and in all circumstances. My prayer is that the few minutes you spend listening to this podcast will help you feel more loved, understood, appreciated, and encouraged to meet the challenges that are uniquely yours. So thanks for being here and we'll move on to today's topic. Today's topic is more on our Creating Home series, and the title is Learning to Be Unconditionally Loving. And while that seems to be something that is kind of a no-brainer, it isn't. And mostly because in our culture, we don't really understand what being unconditionally loving means. And it's a problem. It's a problem if you're trying to become something that you don't know, you haven't experienced. So there's there's much to do. But yes, it seems to go without saying that creating a place where people feel loved and where they feel they belong would require us as moms to cultivate this way of being in the world that is unconditionally loving. And, and it's it's very possible and it is just crucial. And along with being crucial, it's not a walk in the park. It requires a lot more honesty and dedicated time and effort and study and practice and really intense humility. Doesn't really happen without that. And of course, the thing that fuels all of that is our ability to connect with God, to feel his love, and to learn to connect with our the people in our lives who are unconditionally loving themselves, at least a lot of the time. When we connect with them, we can fill up on the love that we need ourselves in order to be able to give that kind of love to other people. But I have to say that the, the learning, this whole unconditional love learning venture is life-changing and soul cleansing. And it's worth every minute of effort that you're willing to put in. And partly what I wanted to share with you today is some of the results, some of the ways that my life is changing and some of the ways I'm seeing the lives of my clients change that kind of surprised me, that I didn't anticipate these particular things coming from our efforts to be more loving people. And of course, you can learn more about this in the Healing with Love class that opens again in the spring. You can learn more about it in the Lioness Lifestyle subscription that's starting in January. I hope you'll join us. It is like a drop in the bucket, $12 a month. And I would love to have you there. We we learn these principles and we do a group coaching session each month 
and you do assignments and you get a really beautiful um, tradition tracking page for each month. So it's an incredible value. I hope you'll consider it and join us. So on to the results that I wanted to tell you about. These, these results are hard won. <laughs> this isn't something we started doing and a week later went, wow, I feel so much better. Because actually at first you kind of feel worse before you feel better. Because you, you go through this process of seeing yourself more clearly and seeing the ways that you've been habitually unloving. And it's really, really a humbling process. But we walk through all of that together and it's very doable. But here are some of the results that I have observed in myself and others when we learn this new way of thinking and being. Number one, it seems as though we are no longer in that state that the scriptures call past feeling. Have you ever felt that way? Like you just couldn't feel what was going on? Or you couldn't feel empathy? Or you couldn't uh, process all the things that were going on in your life? Well, some of us, and maybe you, have spent years and years building these walls of protection around ourselves, around our hearts. And not only building walls, but then also practicing some really off-putting behaviors that we think will protect us from others or from life. But what we find is that when the walls go down and those protective and sometimes manipulative behaviors of trying to get what we need in a roundabout, unloving way, when those are gone, all of a sudden it's amazing what love there is in the world that's available that we never felt. We've come to feel that we can now really mourn with those that mourn and comfort those that stand in need of comfort as our baptismal covenant requires. And not only can we be empathetic, but we can feel the love of God in our lives as we pray, as we study and read, and as we talk to each other and accept each other. And it's, it's really an eye-opening experience. Wait, I've been here and all this love has been here, but I couldn't feel it? Wow, that's quite a revelation. Number two, we are becoming more relaxed. Once we start gathering, really love gathering, the real thing, you know, like unconditional love, not, not the pseudo love that we've tried to earn or tried to work for or try to prove that we deserve, but actually the real acceptance, that real clear, I love you no matter what, even when you make mistakes kind of love, when we really start feeling that and it starts building in us, then we can relax because here we've been on this really intense, well, first of all, we've had an intense need to feel loved. And so we've attempted to control everything, <laughs> our environment and our people. And it just isn't necessary anymore when you feel loved. And so that, that feeling of being compelled and frantic to have things in order or to 
try to control someone else or a situation, it it falls off and it's very relaxing. Number three, we are becoming less and less concerned about the opinions of other people. That's really quite a taskmaster, isn't it? To live under the fear of needing the approval of other people and trying to posture um, or somehow gain the good opinion of other people by the way we look or the things we do, the things we say, the things we accomplish. It's really exhausting. So we used to feel empty and afraid. I mean, we didn't know that. We didn't understand that. We didn't have those words. But now that we've gone through this process of seeing ourselves as we really are and understanding that we wouldn't be unloving if we felt loved, helps us to know there's been a deficiency there and emptiness there, and fear there, which has caused us to spend so much time striving and working and proving, trying to prove to other people that we're worthy of their approval. And it just, it, it doesn't work and it's exhausting. But in place of that, striving and pushing now we can be free to be ourselves and we can be goofy and we can make mistakes and sometimes we're messy and spontaneous and sometimes we recognize that we need to be alone and regroup but it's incredibly liberating to drop the feeling of being constantly watched and judged Number four, we can rest. Instead of all of that pushing and driving and stressing, we can just take life a day at a time and we can feel solid in ourselves and in our relationships because <laughs> we're not walking through our lives creating these massive tornadoes of stress for ourselves and for everyone around us. And instead of feeling like we're only worthy when we've accomplished some big goal or we've checked everything off our to-do lists, we know that we're worthy now and we can breathe and relax and our bodies and our minds can rest. Number five, we can heal. Over the years of this kind of living, of striving and proving and protecting and getting, trying to get the thing, the love that we needed, only the way that we're trying to get it doesn't bring us the real thing. Through that process, our bodies take brutal beatings. And I'm not overstating that. It is brutal to live in a chronic fight or flight mode. The tension that's caused by that ongoing stress and that fear, the fear of believing that we need to be perfect or we're not acceptable. And not only that, but we need to be perfect by ourselves with no help. That kind of tension ties a body in knots and eventually it becomes illness and it becomes chronic pain. And I know this because I've lived this. And I no longer live in chronic pain. And the difference is staggering. But once you can lay down that burden of, of perfectionism, you can eventually pick up health and vitality and energy and freedom. 
all the things that you really originally wanted in the first place. Number six, our marriages can thrive. This one point is worth any and all the effort that any of us have made. Because a strong and functioning marriage relationship just ripples out, ripples out to your children, ripples out to your community, and is just, I, I don't think there are words to say how enriching a thriving marriage is. And a big part of that, of this point of having your marriage thrive is that we've learned to tell the truth about ourselves instead of having that outward look of blaming or fault finding with our spouses, especially since we live in this climate in our culture where there are so many jokes and um, I don't like this phrase, but I'm going to use it, dissing on men belittling them it's it's easy to get into this frame of mind but when we get out of that and we are taking responsibility for ourselves and we're getting really good at telling the truth to our spouses for instance telling um, recognizing when we've done something unloving, like we've run from a conversation or we've attacked someone in some um, obvious way or not so obvious way, when we are acting like victims, when we're clinging really hard to someone, all of these maladaptive behaviors that have become just patterns when we see ourselves and we tell the truth about those times, it frees our spouses up to tell the truth about themselves too, because they're not under the line of fire anymore. And they can feel safe and they can feel secure in our love and attachment to them. And so it frees them up to participate more fully in the family and to give their honest opinions without being anxious. And they can pitch in and help and, and really want to be with us and around us because we've dropped our claws and fangs. Really, really important one. Number seven, we spend more time caring about what God thinks and being right with him and less about trying to please other people or be socially acceptable. We really feel the meaning of this scripture, um, 2 Nephi 24.3, that says, The Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Behaviors that lock us into that chronic negative, blaming, fault-finding, attacking thinking and acting like victims, that is bondage. And it creates a lot of sorrow and it comes from a lot of fear. And repenting and, and becoming free from that pain, the pain of our own unloving behavior, not just the pain it's caused us, but the pain that it has caused our spouses and our children, that is truly coming out of sorrow and bondage. And I don't think it's possible to understand the relief of this, this self-inflicted pain until it's gone. It's one of those phenomenon where you don't know that you hurt until the pain eases but it's 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 a profound shift so if the atonement of jesus christ and the gift of repentance is still a theory in your life but not something that you use constantly 
then I want to invite you to learn what behaviors are unloving, some that I've just talked about. And you can read a lot about on the Linus blog. Take responsibility for those unloving behaviors by acknowledging the wrong behavior, saying you're sorry, asking for forgiveness, and inviting God into your life so that you can learn to love and be loved with his power, not on your own power and not with willpower or some other out there wish. Because this daily relief that we all need, that we can get from repenting, is so sweet and so liberating that it is crazy if we are not using it, especially if we believe in it and we're not using it. And this relief is available even to moms who are good and kind-hearted and work hard and who would never intentionally hurt anyone especially not their family or their friends. The atonement of Jesus Christ is just as much for moms as it is for anyone else. In fact, maybe even more if there were a more or less. Because we're striving to instill testimony and love and confidence and belonging into those people that God has entrusted to us. And we want to love them. We want to be loving. And so we have to repent. It just, there's no other way around it. That's just what we have to do. Number eight. We are no longer trying to accomplish our great work alone. We've come to know in our bones that we need the influence and the guidance and the love of God every minute of every day. That's not because we aren't good enough, but because we're human and learning. We also have come to know that along with the Lord carrying our burdens and our pain, he also deserves the glory of our success. Pride is just as deadly to a saintly striving woman as it is to the most deprived person. In fact, we've learned that we aren't any better if we need God less. Now, of course, we're in this process. We're all learning and we're practicing and it's a completely new way of life. It's a new way of being a mother, of being a wife, of being a daughter, of being a sister and a friend. And of course, we're practicing, we're practicing all the pieces. We're practicing connecting with God, feeling his love, inviting him and accepting him into our lives every day. And also inviting and accepting the love of other people into our lives. And we're practicing the process of repentance. We're practicing our new behaviors. We're practicing seeing ourselves. And the point is that we are lifelong learners and we relish the opportunity to become the people that God knows that we can be, that we were created to be. I hope this list has been inspiring to you. If you can relate to any of these items, I hope that you'll continue to read and listen and possibly join the lifestyle group or come and do healing with love with us in the spring. There's so much to learn and it's exciting and life-changing as you can hear from this list. Most of all, I pray that you will create places of security 
and belonging for your family. By becoming the loving person that you want to be. That's all for today. Take good care.